And it's helpful to know something about the geography of Israel, which is why I've handed out for you um, a couple of different maps, but one that gives you physical features, and that's, that's on the top. It has often been pointed out that in the past 4,000 years, more wars have been fought for the possession of the tiny strip of land known as Canaan or the land of Israel or Palestine than have been fought for almost any other area in the world. And in the ancient world, the reason for this was that this very small rectangle, it's about 150 miles long and 70 miles wide, it's about the size of Rhode Island, this very small rectangle lies on the way to anywhere worth going in the ancient Near East. You've got Egypt over here, You've got Asia Minor up here, and you've got Mesopotamia over here. Not a tremendous amount of inherent value in this strip of land, but it's important for where you could go by traveling through it. So you have three main trade routes that cross the country, and they were used by trading caravans that would carry gold and grain and spices and textiles and other goods between Egypt and the rest of the Fertile Crescent up into Asia Minor. So control of these international highways brought a great deal of wealth to the area, but the central location was a double-edged sword. Because in times of peace, it would bring prosperity, but of course, um, in times of war, the land was perpetually invaded as armies would crisscross the land, going off to do battle with the great powers. Um, so on their way to conquests in Egypt, or Asia Minor, or Mesopotamia, armies would uh, tramp through the land. And that explains the succession of rulers that um, have held the region. The Egyptians, the Amorites, the Israelites, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, um, the Greek Ptolemies, the Seleucids, the Romans, and the list continues as we go on into the medieval and the modern periods. Now, despite the fact that this uh, is a very small piece of land, it boasts great geographical diversity. So there are three main geographical subdivisions. You can see them on your map, and they really run in strips from north to south. If you look at your map, you'll see first on the, on the west side, you've got a low coastal plain. It's about 20 or 30 miles wide. It's the coastal plain, and that provides the, or that is the main highway out of Egypt or down to Egypt. That area was controlled by Egypt at the purported time of the Exodus. Running north to south next to that coastal plain is a region of um, low mountains. These low mountains are cut by some valleys that sort of run east-west. You'll see one there, the Valley of Jezreel in particular. Um, that was a particularly fertile valley. So the valleys that cut through the mountains are extremely fertile. Um, the plain of Megiddo also joins with the Valley of Jezreel. That's a, the most fertile part of the country, but it was also the site of many of the most uh, bloody battles in Israel's history. Then next to that north-south central hill country, you've got also running north to south what we call the Great Jordan Rift Valley. It goes the entire length of the country. And the Jordan River runs through this valley. It rises in the Sea of Galilee, or the Canaret, in the north, and then it flows about 65 miles, I believe, down to the Dead Sea. At the northern extreme of this rift, um, the Rift Valley, is Mount Hermon, which is the highest point. It's a snow-covered Mount Hermon, and that's the highest point in Israel. It rises about 10,000 feet um, above sea level. The central mountain area, those are between 4,000 and 10,000 feet above sea level. As you move from the central area over to Jerusalem, Jerusalem is about 2,500 feet above sea level. But then as you continue moving east towards the Rift Valley, um, that area is dramatically lower. And you feel it as you travel uh, the road there, just how quickly it drops. So that by the time you get to the Sea of Galilee, you're 700 feet below sea level, and the Dead Sea is nearly 1,300 feet below sea level. That is the lowest point on the Earth's land surface. So it's a dramatic drop in just a very short geographical um, area. Up in the north, the river is surrounded by very lush vegetation on both sides, but there's no life 65 miles south um, down by the Dead Sea. Uh, this is because the, the water is 25% salts and minerals, although I hear they found some sort of bacteria or something there, so I guess I shouldn't say anymore that there's no life, but essentially there's no life we would care about in the Dead Sea area. So it's a very desolate area, and tradition identifies this as the site of Sodom and Gomorrah. The area around the sea is basically semi-desert. We call this the wilderness, the wilderness of Judea, um, between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea, the wilderness of, of Judah or Judea. So within this relatively tiny area, there are radically diverse uh, regions, and this fact held important implications for Israel's history. Unity was difficult. 
Being somewhat isolated, the inhabitants of each region developed a distinctive economic and cultural character. Uh, you have the small settled farmer in the more fertile areas. You have semi-nomadic shepherds. You have city dwellers. You have merchants and traders who are handling the commerce on the trade routes and enjoying broader cultural contacts. So that's the geographical setting.